Take a Welcome drink. Welcome to this edition of Road Trippin'. I will take a drink of my poppy. I'm obsessed. Um, what? Allie Clifton, Richard Jefferson. Not a vampire Channing Fry. I already asked you guys to do homework. Did you do your I, homework? No, no. Mm -mm. Bullshit. No. Good. Horrible students. I'm very upset about this. I, so yeah, disappointed I, I, in the both of you. I, teachers have called me far worse. Uh, Dude, Allie, the Having one movie that, you want us to watch is literally disgusting softcore porn. How do you, first of all, there's, okay. How do you, how do you know it's disgusting softcore porn if you never even gave it a chance to watch it? Allie, this is, hopefully this is for adults to hear. There yeah. are certain things. Hey, right, no, let's. <laughs> no, I need it. I need a full review. And this know, is what no, I no, want. No. Oh, we know we have other listeners. We know we okay. do. Here we know we have other, we have younger listeners. Come on now. Okay, then let me say this, Richard. I'll Before rephrase. he goes and gets too graphic. Stop no, being no, a dad. Graphic. I'm not Stop getting graphic because that's disgusting. I, 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 there are boundaries that I set. There are like when in you're- In your personal life. In your personal life. In the world, there needs to be boundaries. There needs to, it's sometimes a movie. somebody got to say, no, stop, that's enough. And this movie is a no, stop that, that's enough. You don't need to do that. Keep it simple, stupid. We don't need all the extra. We don't need all that. Why? Why, oh, Allie? We don't need that. What just Anyways. happened to two people just hey, doing yeah, just, this? Yeah. Richard, why are you so extra. uncomfortable? It's a movie. I know. I, first of all, why are you getting mad at me? Why are you getting because mad at me? I because I'm just asking for your review and your your uh, uh, review. First two all, thumbs down. You're taking away of our freedom of speech. I'm, <laughs> no, actually, you're taking away mine right now. You're taking now, Allie, I, wa I watched the reviews. You see, I don't have no sleep. I need to send you some eye patches. Dude, I got them. Allie, have you ever seen Two Girls, One Cup? Yes, I watched it on this episode for you. And it's oh. funny that you made me watch it on this episode, but yet oh. I can't talk about a movie that was nominated for a Golden Globe. Yes, I heard that. Golden Golden Globe. Globe. those are the just, rules. Ugh. Those are the rules. Did we really do cup, two girls one cup is beyond any kind of comprehension <laughs> in this movie i mean you guys have no. sent me you guys no. have sent me over and over nothing <laughs> but no, appropriate no comedy, nothing, Allie. nothing but appropriate things richard right, handed me it. handed us the bible okay yes. channing only watched the red river flowing okay you have four women in your house Thank you. Oh, Get oh, used oh, to it, oh, Dad. Okay. It's, okay. Okay. But the last one, the roommate one, was really good, Channing. That was really funny. Um, but right. I'm very disappointed in the both of you. We'll move on because Richard's very uncomfortable. Knowing that we aren't sending you eye patches because of your excitement to watch Saltburn last night. What happened to you last night? What went on? Well, uh, I. Why are you so I've tired? Been, yeah. I've been very busy lately. And a group of guys from my neighborhood were like, hey, let's go to the. Dame's coming back to Portland. Let's go to the game. So they had a party bus. That should have told you already what happened. Um, and we had a great time. Great time. And then you went guys out had a party afterwards. bus for Dame? Wow. No, no. We had a party bus because there was like 14 of us to go to the game. And by the time we got to the game, it was people decided, hey, every quarter, let's do shots. And I'm 40, so obviously that catches up. Um, but no, I, let, me, let me go on my little rant here. Please. <laughs> The Milwaukee Bucks are absolute trash can at defense. It's disgusting. Like, and I've I had a few at the game, and I, I feel sorry for my neighbor who went with me because I was in his ear like, look at this. Every single time, the, the Portland Trailblazers, they try. They're young. They try. They don't have a one-on-one -on -one player that should be able to get by anybody on this, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. All night long, every single straight line drive, and I'm including Giannis. If you watch the film, watch the level of effort on defense was disgusting. I don't want nobody to tell me that the Bucs have a chance to win a championship with that level of defense. They don't care. They don't give a shit. It's gross. And that's my rant. It's gross to watch. Congratulations to the Blazers. There's no way that... The Bucks should have lost to the Blazers and lost the way that they did. It was, I was just, uh, um, um, it, uh, like. The Bucks did lose 119, 116. They were 24 and 8 through December, and they just finished the month of January 8 and 8. 
Um, I have questions. And I'm also mad because they fired fired a guy that I know that I don't think it's his fault, but it is what it um, is. I have a question. Yes. Was it a suite or were you sitting in general population? No, 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 no. We definitely we're not in general public. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, I, I had questions. I was like, bro, good for you, <laughs> no. man. You know what? You're no, a man no, no, of the no. people, bro. I, uh, You're you man know what's people. crazy? Uh, my kids are getting into basketball more. So I actually went to a game on Monday against the 76ers. Shout out to Bias Harris and Matt Brazzi. Um, and my kids and my little God kids had the best time ever. And I'm yeah. like, Shit, this is, this is like Hendrix. He's one of the only boys, him and his, him and his, basically his cousin Davis were sitting, watching this game, talking basketball the whole time. That's awesome. And I'm like, I'm like, Oh my boys. <laughs> Uh, what did I say? Because that's the only thing. Is like I would love to take my boys to games, but like you can't. It's like getting a suite is a whole thing. thing. We're poor. What? A suite is like three thousand dollars for sixteen that's, people. That's, well, that's so why typically typically they only come to games if I like work in LA. Like if I work in LA, they'll come to games. But it's like I don't get to like go and like sit with them at a game. That's the part that yeah. kind of sucks. It would it's just fun. be chaotic. You know, Dude, it just wouldn't. My kids are chaotic. chaotic. I, no, I'm not talking about the kids, bro. I'm not talking about the kids. Oh. I'm not talking about the kids. The kids can be handled, but it's like you you take them to like baseball. I get to take them to baseball and stuff because people don't fuck with me in baseball games. Play, I don't know. I the baseball. No, no baseball fan knows me. What did we just have an opportunity to send you to for the Dodgers last year? And really? you were like, hell no, it's in the middle of a Sunday afternoon because it was hot out. <laughs> yeah, that shit. Like, that, hey, they are that's, not going to go to that. And if, I'm like, it's the Dodgers. What? I was like, if you're on the wrong side of that sun <laughs> and you're on that top of that fucking hill, yo, that shit is no joke, man. That shit is no joke. You got to be on that other side. I, I don't know what it was, but and the sun doesn't hit to the other side to like the eighth inning. So it's like, how especially much do you think during the they're going to cough this year. on you. What? How oh, much? oh, absurd. Crazy. You know what's crazy? Absurd. I was talking to my guy, Jed. Jed Lowry he was a retired MLB, 17 years played. He was explaining uh, Otani's contract and how smart that contract is. Genius. It's, it's unbelievable. He will never get taxed to live, he only gets taxed the minimum amount. For his contract of two million dollars, as a California resident, and California's trying to sue him. <laughs> they're like, they're trying to that. sue him for that seven hundred. They try to get a piece of that. Well, it, the other part about it is that when you when you kind of break that down, he does lose out on some because the money oh, yeah. is deferred. So the amount of money that you would get just on your own interest being in, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Have access. So he's really, def like, he's deferring money, but, the like, he's also, I wouldn't say losing money, but there is a value to getting your money now and having sure. that money work for you over 10 years, especially that amount of money, because that's yeah. millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. No, okay, I'm I saying millions get... of dollars in, like, interest and shit. Oh, yeah. but I want to get, get Richard thought on the bucks just to get back on track to that having said that <laughs> take a drink channing really quick before we go on what was the reception like for dame was it awesome did he get two tribute videos T three. So <laughs> they he got announced, three they stood up maybe a minute clapping everyone had dame jerseys on went back first time out you know obviously did a video and that was more of his playing and then the one thing that i respect the shit out of for dame right he was so ingrained in a community, which I think a lot of guys sort of do, but he really did. Like, not only courts and appearances, but like when the whole Black Lives Matter thing came, he was marching with people. When it came to different communities, he was always out and about. Like, the pickup games during the summer, like everyone was getting a call, like things like that. Like, just he was so ingrained in a community. I think it's rare to find somebody like that and then this community loves him. And then, you know, who took that kind of personally is Scoot, because Scoot was open. And I think he mm. gets a bad rap. He's 19. And, and mm. I was doing a little research. The average point guard, starting point guard in the NBA makes $18 million. And mm. Scoot is 19 years old at the third round pick or third pick. 
and everyone's like, you know, not everyone. A lot of people are already like, well, is he a bust? And I'm like, bust. <laughs> You're like, guys. That's not it's, it's your hard. expectations are. It, it's hard. It's hard. It, it's hard to yeah. have rational conversations with starting <laughs> in irrational places. Dude, like, I it's love good. it. It's like, come, I know. It, it's you. You don't. First of all, do you know how hard it is to even be able to tell? That's part of the issue with kids coming yeah. in at 19. Like you have to decide if you're going to extend him for X amount of dollars when he's 22 years old, he's not even remotely close to developing or being, no. if he continues to progress and work the right way, he will be twice as good. Like think about Shay, think about Shay and how old Shay is oh. three, three years ago, every year Shay has gotten better, but three years ago, you had to decide four years ago, how much his value is. So it was like there are teams that might trade away a guy like let's say an Emmanuel quickly. They might yeah. trade away a player that continues to get better, and that's the hardest shit with with the league. Is like you'd get these guys so young, and it's like oh, it's scoot a bus. It's like, bro, he doesn't. He barely even has ten thousand hours in, <laughs> right? Because like, he's not he's not old enough. I was going over the West, the Western Conference guards, right? So every week. Think, let's go. Let's work our way down. Just California, Steph, De'Aaron Fox, James Harden, D'Angelo Russell, Devin Booker, like I would say, Colin Sexton. Then you have Mike Conley Jr. Then you have SGA, Luca. I mean, the Spurs. Okay, you are gonna get you one there. <laughs> Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie. the cell. The cell pretty good. <laughs> the cell's solid, but he's you know. Solid. No, I'm saying they're on a bad team, but I'm saying I think if he was on a good team, I think he would be putting in work. Yeah, he's the only guy in the NBA that I did not know that he was making a hundred million dollars. Yeah, when yeah. He did the game. I said, "Who got what?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Who?" <laughs> yeah, but then you watch him play. Then you watch him play. Hey, listen, that's the quietest hundred million anyone has bro, ever got. They were like, I, "Look." The first they time snuck I, him that shit. They said, here, take this, take this. No, the first time I walked by, I'm like, whoa, this this dude, like, he might be taller than me. And oh, he yeah, got a good, yeah. he's big dude, and he's got a wet ball, elevates, <laughs> it's pretty. Oh, like his ball. game is nice. Yeah. How um what do you think of the defense, Richard? The Bucks. Oh, uh, the Do you agree uh, with Channing? They're not gonna win a championship with that well, defense. No, not currently, not uh, not how they are currently playing that that's what this, is this, it what is it just I, effort I, is it just is it I think, I think it, it's never one thing it's never one thing i think it's age it's interest it's commitment it's it's personnel it's schemes when you have this yeah it's like it is it's it's all it's and i'm not saying it's all of those things i'm saying it's always a combination of things it's never just we need to fix our schemes because our effort is there our intense isn't there we're locked in because if you are all of those things schemes kind of come and go if you're locked in and fo focused on it you'll make up for, if you're making second efforts if you're doing this if you're communicating you can make up for an average to below average scheme you can make up for that and so there it, it's and that's part of the reason maybe why they change coach because defense is commitment and communication some of for its sure. personnel and ability which we know they have personnel they don't have the elite personnel at the top but they had like you know with, with Dame Lillard and de defensively, but you should have enough to be average. You should mm -hmm. be a if they, if you told me they were thirteenth in defense or fourteenth in defense, and they went from a top five defense, but now they have a great late game closer, so they're dangerous, right? That that's not mm -hmm. the case, and so that's where it's just like Doc Rivers. I don't. There's a lot of things that that <laughs> there. I don't envy that position that he just took in. I don't envy that. You know what I do? I do because but he's I, getting forty million. To I'm, do I'm talking about from a. I'm talking about from a strategic standpoint. From a what strategic and cleaning up, cleaning up that mess. Let me go on my thing. Do you know? And I, I think I said this on last podcast. And I watched a bunch of like Bucks. I, I like deep dived a little bit into like the Bucks problems. When the last coach, I forgot his name right now. The beers are kicking in. Adrian uh, Griffin. Yeah, yeah, Griffin who coached me in, in, in Orlando, good dude, great human. When he asked them at the beginning of the year to play a different style of defense, they sort of committed to that. And then the minute that it didn't work a little bit, they gave up on it. 
And we're like, we need to go back to what we used to do and what we do. But you don't have Drew Holiday on your team. They don't want to adjust. Has Brooke Lopez, has that offense or defense adjusted to the league whatsoever? Meaning, look at, okay, Philly. When, when Nick Nurse went in there, Nick Nurse brought in his defensive assignments. He'll throw in a zone. He'll throw in a 2-3, a 1-3-1. Three, three, one. He'll throw in a switch. He'll throw in a drop. He'll throw in these things because those guys are committed to those things, right? You look at some of the best teams in the league, they are committed to having defensive versatility, whether they switch every time. No team that's great defensively does one thing all the time. The Bucs are committed mentally to only doing one thing all the time. They want Brooke Lopez to be in a drop of ice at 36 years old when the leagues, when the guards in the league are bigger, stronger, faster, and can shoot better, they're not little guards anymore. And it's just well, not, it's it's outdated. The, well, how they well, think they're gonna win is outdated. Okay, really quickly. They traditionally have had a top 10 defense. Which they tradi- I understand they traditionally have had a top five defense. So but Drew Holiday. I I I I I understand I that. But but he ain't the only motherfucker on that team playing defense. Like, let, let's calm down. Like, there's the, – the, it is – you don't get it. Like, Drew Holiday wasn't a one-man show. It was Brooke Lopez. It was Giannis Wayne, Defensive Player of the Year. It was having other active scramble guys around them, you know, when they won the championship. They had P.J. Tucker, right? So, it was like they had – they're a defensive team, you know, and Drew Holiday was a key piece of that. Now, taking away that key piece shouldn't crumble your entire defense, he wasn't Giannis, right? Like Blake, uh, like what Brooke Lopez was close to getting Defensive Player of the Year. Finished, I think, top two or three in voting. Uh, so I just I, I say that to say is that it's not just personnel. There's a level of commitment. There's a level of something else going on. Uh, in my in my opinion, and I'm not saying it's because they hate the coach or anything. no. I'm just saying they have to recommit themselves to to effort. You were talking about blow buys. That's not schemes. That's not drop coverage. That's not this. It's just watching guys not as locked in as they should on that end of the floor. Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry 11s are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual-density UA Flow Cushioning and Traction. It's an emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep Under Armour wherever you go. So do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go from east to west. There is a game tonight, so let's not talk too much about it, which we probably don't even need to because of what I'm about to say. Lakers, Celtics. But when it comes to defense... A team that has wanted to hang their hat on the defensive end showed last year, a season ago. I understand it's in the past. They're capable with a lot of the guys returning. Last five for the Lakers, they have allowed 135.2 points a game. Most in the NBA since January 23rd. Um, They come into tonight. They're 7-17 and on the road this season, which is 23rd Mm -hmm. in the NBA. And they're facing the Celtics. I'm going to say this. It was just announced that there will be no LeBron James, no Anthony Davis. They will now have missed a combined 10 games. Okay. We're almost at the 50, 50 game mark. Um, AD's dealing with the hip, Braun with the, the uh, ankle injury. Um, but before we dive into the actual thoughts on the Lakers as we're approaching the trade deadline, you two played alongside LeBron. You two have... Uh, been a part of the cryptic tweets um, over the years. One, did you guys know that there are two hourglass emojis? No. There is one no. sand half full and there's one sand half empty. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, LeBron tweeted the other day an hourglass. <coughs> Which one? You guys, you guys, the half empty. <laughs> the one where the sand is at the bottom. 
Maybe he's waiting for his favorite show to come out. Maybe he's got a big thing. Maybe he's got a big. Maybe he's drinking got a big the wine, thing. man. He's got. You know what? Will help us because he did tweet it at two twenty-seven in the morning. Yeah, what but he's after he's on, their he's loss, he's, 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 on, he's on the East Coast. You know, he's jet lagged. It's after the game in Atlanta, back to back. Yeah, oh, and have you? Awesome. Yes, have you seen the new Halo trailer? Maybe he was like teasing that, like, "Oh, it's Ooh. coming soon." Yeah. Wait, seriously, season two? Yeah, season two. I, how about this? I hopped on season one late. I hopped on season one late. Same here. Like, it's great. Yeah, it, it, it's solid. It's solid. Fans, nothing. You have nothing to worry about. Okay, <laughs> nothing to worry but, about. Yeah. Look, Laker fans, at the end of the day, it's almost over. It's almost yeah, over. Y'all suck. Y'all suck. No, yeah, don't, don't worry. It's I, it's almost over, Laker fans. Not from a plan point standpoint, but I'm like, like this era, this generation, they've they've got one, two more years left. Oh. Right. It's like, you know, maybe that's what the hourglass was. They they don't have the windows. The, certain teams like, you know, the Lakers and, you know, when you go and say Warriors, and, you know, the Patriots, like when you're in these like epic windows, you always feel like it's never going to end. Right. Well, this window for them is closing. Right. And that's it. Some people might say it's closed. Yeah. I think it's closing. Yeah. I think if you've got those two guys, you have a chance. You just have to find the right pieces to go around them. Ooh. So maybe that's what he was tweeting. And, and Richard, you know what? I'm going to take a page from your book. <clears throat> oh, tell us he, about his book. <laughs> his book is this. <laughs> if LeBron leaves or AD leaves, how much are those Laker tickets? I don't really think there's two or three players you can go get with the personnel that you have to be contenders. Y'all are not good. There's no mm -hmm. pieces. Who are you getting for D'Angelo Russell right now? Who are you getting for Torian Prince or any of these guys that you're going to go, if we get this guy or that guy, oh, oh, here we go, Denver. I, don't, I just don't believe that. It, it's not like that. The way that the league is right now, every team, if you look at the Western Conference, every team is, is very nice. I think every team is set up, except for San Antonio, for like, Extended success. I think Utah set up for extended success. Houston, Phoenix, uh, Sacramento, like whether they're going to be fifth or sixth, that's still extended success. They're going to have a chance. I don't know if the Lakers are set up for extended success. Your, your there... best player is 40 years old. Uh, that, that, like, how does that make sense? No disrespect you have no to young Davis. Talent. He's 30 and he's been phenomenal. This he's year. been outstanding. He's, he's Anthony Davis been outstanding this year. He's okay, been outstanding. Still, yes. and I mean, and Ron is still the, the name, but Anthony Davis has been. But, the so, well, okay. So tell me, that's you're the, saying this now, but look at your record. So yeah, yeah that's what I was about to say. Yeah, that's, the, that's the biggest scary part. Is and that I, yep. go, go, no, really quickly. Uh, no, you got you have No, I'm saying you have your two best players that have been healthy primarily, only missed combined 10 games. Anthony Davis looks yeah. like he's been playing great. Defensive end, being aggressive, being the kind of the head of the snake, and LeBron doing, you know, playing great, right? You know, again, we talk about his age, but at the end of the day, he's a 25-point game scorer. Those fuckers don't grow on trees. So if you're doing that in an efficient manner, you're like, okay, your two top guys are here, and you guys are a 500 team. Like, so that, that's the biggest issue for the Lakers. It's not, yeah. you know, other years, the excuse was our guys weren't healthy. We couldn't get them on the field. We didn't have that. Well, you have them and you're not winning. And that's the scary part for the Lakers. Yeah. 24 and 25. Braun mentioned the other night that on any given night, they can go out and kick anyone's ass any given night. They could be beat by any team. The record is what they are right now. It'll be interesting though. Come the deadline to see if they do anything. Um, something. Back to what's up? So please do something <laughs> back to the yeah, east yeah uh after tonight the lakers actually do play the knicks good news on julius randall that it came back dislocated shoulder just two to three weeks will be reevaluated. Uh, okay I so i dislocated worked. my shoulder and had shoulder mm -hmm. surgery he's gonna be in that uh, like a shoulder sleeve that's attached mm -hmm. he's gonna have issues in the playoffs because anytime, he, as physical as he is, anytime that he goes up like this and somebody comes down, you have to imagine when you dislocate your shoulder, those muscles around your this ball are not as strong. No. And there's not like you have to do, I had to do 
30 to 40 minutes of just shoulder work to on my shooting arm, like even to this day, like, like that's as far as up as mine goes, unless I do that on purpose. So he's going to have to have surgery in the off season. Now, mentally, can he get over that? And number two, what I'm going to say is probably not the, I don't think the next, if he's not as aggressive, I don't think they're going to worry about it. I think the biggest issue is getting Mitchell Robinson back. Hmm. I think if they get Mitchell Robinson back and he's somewhat decent for the playoffs, they make some noise. Mitchell Robinson, OG, Jalen Brunson, we, we can, we can okay. do something with that. I think they have a puncher's chance. Like Atlanta four years ago, puncher's Atlanta four years ago made the Eastern Conference Finals. They had a puncher's chance. They were ready to win. They were healthy. They had good chemistry. I, I think they have a puncher's chance like Cleveland. Ooh. Ooh. I want to go to Cleveland in a second, but we're going to do something else before. But Rich, your thoughts. Okay. What are we going to do? My thoughts on what? What he just said. Are you good? Um, no. Having like a puncher's it. chance. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like. I, I like. Just swing, swing that motherfucker. Boop. The Knicks. The, no, no. no. All, all kidding aside, the Knicks look great. They, the Knicks look great. You know, and this is this is part of. These are the moments that make your team better in the long run. Well, like. They were healthy. They made a trade. Everything's clicking. You got to deal through some adversity. And, and I mean that because you're going to face adversity in the postseason. You're going to face being down one. You're going to face someone tweaking an ankle. Can you, like, whether it's via experience that we've done it before, or is it that other guys know how to step up or, you know. So I, I think these moments, as when you have a guy down for a little bit, these things can be valuable from a place of, connectivity getting your team together so when he comes back I, look i think they're one of the best teams they're one of the best teams in the conference do top i think that they can, do i think top that they four. can win a championship no i think no. they're one more it doesn't have, i think right now they're one more very good piece away like think what is that like, piece Richard? what position well, no but I, no but i'm saying think about it like do you remember the detroit pistons when they won in 04 like yeah they had chauncey no, they had red college you don't, you don't remember oh, – you, you, do you remember when they won the championship in 04? No, I was in college. I was worried you, about you, myself. You didn't, know, you uh, didn't uh, take okay. me on a Vegas trip in 04, Richard. Uh, 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 do you remember when they won the championship in 04? No, you no, you man. didn't take me you're, to you're, Your job in is literally to fucking know basketball. Do you remember when they won the championship in 04? No, you didn't take me to Vegas in 04, Richard. I was worried about – I was being present in college and the University of Arizona. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, Turner obviously hires uh, only the finest. <laughs> only the, play the finest. Yo, yeah, Turner had that lineup going so smooth, though, yeah. Channing, so, the other day. Yeah. Holy, what? Yeah. Hey, Richard, come on over. I'll, I'll be so proud of him. Hey, is perk. your name under uh, Grubhub? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Big Perk? Uh, you got what was coming at you with that, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. We recording. We recording. Say hi, to, say hi to Allie and Channing. Oh, so I said, what's up? What's up, Allie? What's up, Channing? What? Yo, Channing. Channing. Ch Channing. <laughs> Damn, are you in New York? <laughs> nah, he no, he's in downtown I'm L.A. He in down, same thing. He <laughs> <laughs> in downtown L.A. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to call you after. Perky uh, lurky. All right. Perfect. Um. All right, here we are. We've reached that point. Give us your top players from last week, guys. They are your Under Armour game changers of the Oof. week. Which players or coaches impressed you the most? I got to look because there's two. There's two. I just want to make sure. Guys, just like your homework on Saltburn. We do this every week. <laughs> you know. I know, but let me just hold on now. I know. I like the pop quiz version. I like the pop quiz. It's not a pop quiz when you know it's coming. <laughs> Yeah, it is. You know you're gonna get a oh, pop quiz, but you don't know if the pop quiz is coming on Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. You don't know. You've known since honestly. I, I have to say this, and here's the truth. I think it's JB Bickerstaff for me. Oh, great segue. What? Great segue. Oh, he's nine and one in their last ten. They have been playing great. JB is just like adjusted. A lot of people are like, "Well, JB, your offense is this, or you're this, or that," but. He's just adjusting on the fly, and you see what happens. Sometimes less is more, 
and we can we'll talk about this in a second. Maybe Donovan Mitchell needs to be the guy, and we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Maybe you ride with that. I know everyone's like, "Oh, trade him. He's not doing this." Maybe this is that time for you to commit to him and say, "Hey, we're going to ride with you. You're a rare. You're you, you know you're one of those guys that we need to keep around forever." JB. And I, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that, Richard, you're going to pick someone from the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> Wait, what would you say? My dog was barking. I said I'm no, going to go no, out on a limb and okay. say he's going to no, pick someone I, from the Phoenix Yeah, look, I, I'm going to say Devin Booker. <laughs> oh, I'm going to say Devin Booker. Why? Because in his last, like, five, <laughs> six home games, he's averaged, like, 35 our, our road games excuse me in his last like five road games he's averaged like 35 points a game dude's almost averaged 40 points a game on the road in the month and it was just like the Phoenix the Sun. no absolutely not sense. absolutely not i believe in that no look when they have grace now and they have eric gordon when they like they're missing one or two other like versatile pieces that if they can get and i think they have an opportunity to get them in the trade deadline they are a big and, man and Lee, what Okay, here's we will here's go there somebody. in a second. Road wow. Trippin's Game Changers of the Week are sponsored by Under Armour. Do your thing, change the game. The Curry 11 future curries are available now at currybrand.com. Continue. Think about the Suns, and I'm just going to throw out a name. Think about the Suns had like PJ Washington, mm. right? That now I go, oh shit. Like, think about the Suns had like Daniel Gafford, right? Somebody t- like, I just think you cannot win. R- real games without a big man. And, you know, Nurk is Nurk, but I also think they need a rim roller to collapse the defense with all the shooters that they have. Nurk is not a rim roller. He's done great this year. He's done solid in his role. But I would like I, – I personally, as a GM, Channing, say I need this on my team. I need three things on my team. I need an emotional leader. I need somebody that's uber-talented. And I need a big man that is versatile. versatile. Those three things. After that, give me some shooters. Give me some players. Give me somebody that's on a contract here, and I'm good to go. Jeez, bro. D- yeah, thank you. Chan just put together a whole <laughs> roster. Yeah, if it was that. We easy, all love that. Yeah, we, we, wouldn't they all love that shit? Like, fuck. Right. Do you feel like you guys had that in 2016? No, we just had a bunch of psychotic idiots. We had yeah. a, a band of gypsies that was put together that just went. Yeah, you know, I was like, "Do you like? Do you know? Who was it? Was what? it Kyrie's? No, Kyrie Sean? got an extension. So like, yeah. but like Kyrie's extension was going to be Kyrie's extension, whether we won the championship or not. Kyrie was going to yeah. get that. that <laughs> he's going to get that bag regardless. I think in 2016, the thing that I always look back of like why it worked was because. It was egoless. Like when Kyrie wanted to go on a run, we we're like, all right, we got to make this work. And when Braun wanted to go on a run, we got to make this work. And everyone just made it work. Channing's view of this thing is very different than I think other people's view of this egoless the fat Allie's face you know how like when a when a, when a like a puppy hears I was something, only there three months guys when, when, when a puppy hears something oh, and shit. they're like oh my god Allie heard that <laughs> you, see, you really think that that team was egoless Tr- Tristan JR Amon Shumper you Kevin had the Huff. biggest most came- beautiful brightest egos on <laughs> yo I'm no, no, but you. it wasn't above us winning when it really counted. That's what I mean. Oh. Like regular season, oh, for sure. Somebody going to fuck the game up for, for some points. Somebody going to fuck the game up for some points. But like during the playoffs, there was no – there was no – all that went out the window in the playoffs. I will say that. There was zero ego during the but playoffs. But I only was with you guys uh, Allie, Allie. 25 games. Can we? Yeah. So you didn't get to see all the shit. No, I didn't you see didn't any of it. All the shit, bro. You, bro, you actually helped it. You actually helped it. You're like, this. Why is everyone in a bad mood? <laughs> I was like, y'all win it. I came for the worst fucking team in the league. Prince like, in three we're, hours we're with Scott Skiles. And yeah, we're going to dinners every night. This is awesome. And everybody was like. Okay, I guess it. No, but but I would say I, to Channing's point. So if he remembers the playoff run specifically, as you know, he'd kind of felt comfortable, was in a rhythm. 
There was zero ego during the playoffs. Oh. Zero. And that's why we went from like fucking, not I wouldn't say fucking around, but like we were kind of like Denver right now. Where it's yeah. like a little on and off, some, you know, a little bit of highs and lows, level of consistency. They're going to be a 50 win team. Joker's, you know, going to be uh, MVP candidate, like whatever. Like, but once we got to the postseason, shit. That, like, to go, like, that was our longest winning streak was in the postseason. <laughs> Let me ask you guys this because it just kind of brought my attention. Alex Caruso was asked if he thought about had he still been in LA, like what that could have looked like. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not, it's not normal for you guys to do that. Cause you're not wired that way. Right. And, and how yeah. much that could just kind of, do you guys wonder though, or ever think that y'all got broke up too soon? No, no. they just, the warriors added too much. <laughs> they yeah. added too much. If the warriors wouldn't have, if, if Kevin Durant wouldn't have gone, but also there. Kyrie left. No, but I'm saying, though, we probably would have gone back to back. We probably would have gone back to back. Nobody was oh. going to beat us that next year, right? Like, we were even oh. better in 17 than we were in 16. But they were way better. And you, you make a 73-win <laughs> team way better. So that that's, kind that's of just, yeah. yeah. When so, you watch and, film on a team and everyone goes, ah, yeah, you know, what do we do with this, coach? <laughs> oh, no, you're double-teaming. You're lying. What the fuck are you yeah. double-teaming? But think about how many teams weren't even trying to spend money because they knew that they weren't going to compete. Houston was like one of the only teams that was like, we're going to go all in and try and, you know, but yeah. every other team was like, we're just going to wait until this run is over <laughs> for the Warriors, right? Because there was no parity. The Warriors yeah. and Cavs yeah. met four straight years. Like, that's crazy. That's just fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, I know we no. gloss over that now. We were all a part of yeah. it, but four straight years, the same teams meeting in the NBA finals. Like that's fucking that's crazy. I don't yeah. think, like, when was the last time that happened? Lakers, Celtics, maybe, but four straight years? I know Magic and Larry and those did guys. Did that even happen then? I don't no. think so. I, I think no. I think maybe when there was like six teams in the NBA, like oh, eight, eight yeah. teams in the NBA, maybe something like that. But yeah, four straight times in modern day. Now that I'm older, players. I've realized why I got traded. And they were like, Yeah, Channing. It, we love him, but he can't play in the NBA Finals because all they do is play guards. And so we got to get somebody we can – that's why I got Larry Nance and Jordan Clarkson. And I was like – at the time, I didn't get it because I was like, oh, guys, you don't love me? But now I'm like, yeah, yeah I would have got rid of Channing me. Chaney gave his goodbye in his closet. <laughs> yeah, I was packing yeah. my shit up. <laughs> I was packing my I shit up. Hey, I, I knew crying. it. I knew when I was playing – I think I played like 34 minutes that game. And I was over. Your boy was gassed. And I said, hold up. What? I said, wait, wait, wait. Why am I getting all these? Uh, I told Lauren when I got home, I said, yeah, that's it. That's it for us. We gone. Wait, we gone. in Cleveland or Orlando? In Cleveland. In Cleveland. Cleveland. Because in Orlando, in I had asked for a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> hey, listen. In Cleveland. They was, they was, ho they was hoping may maybe Channing put up 17, then we could shut him down. Yeah. I knew oh. something was wrong with Channing when he asked to go out five nights in a row with me on the road. And it was because he didn't want to talk to any of the team. He was no. so mad at them. I heard he was in the Matrix and he just needed someone to uh -huh. watch over him. I forgot being in the Matrix. Yeah. Oh, Dude, shit. being in the Matrix was horrible because I had, you know, I had a conversation. They were like, hey, your name is coming up in trades. And I was like, hey, as a man to man, my wife is nine months pregnant. Can you just yeah. tell me? If I'm going to get traded or if it's getting close, just give me a heads up so that I can plan my life out, right, with Lennox. And they were like, yeah, sure, no problem. Day before trade deadline, Channing, ah, okay, it's kind of cooled off, no big deal. I go play that Minnesota game. I said, I said ooh, I'm playing a lot of minutes. I said, where's everyone else? I said, uh-oh. Then I got that call, 1158. Channing, you're going to the Lakers. With Rob Palenka. I was like, okay, well, shit, cool. Like, they're sort of maybe in the playoff race. And I told the wife, yeah, that's it. That's it for us. <laughs> and I found out I had uh, a broken appendix. And that fucked my whole season, so. Oh, yeah, that did. Yeah, uh, is it broken? Is it, called, is it called a broken it appendix? bursted. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, had a, I was playing with that. I was playing with a swollen appendix for six weeks. I don't even it take Advil. I couldn't cough. That was how bad it was. It was bad. I didn't tell anybody. Aww. And the Aww. UCLA doctor was like, 
Huh? What did you say? Did he not send that picture to you? Of what? Of my appendix? It was his And he will just as... randomly send his appendix. <laughs> are you Richard. sending are you are you sending appendix pics? <laughs> <laughs> there's people that send dick pics and then there's ones that send appendix. Dude, Richard, your appendix is supposed to be like my fingernail. It was <laughs> as big as my pinky. Ah. Uh, you look like a little turd, like a little, <laughs> little, little Taco Bell turd. Um, okay, right before the trade deadline. Who would you like to see make a move that could actually make a difference? Before we wrap this up. Where do I start? Fucking Chicago. Uh, I honestly think blow it up in New Orleans. They're I'm over it. That could uh, make like, a difference just, this year. What are you yeah. saying? New Orleans, Chicago. Uh, ah. I think Sacramento needs to make a move. Why not? Like, they are very stale this year. They're just, they're exactly what they were last year and the year before. I think Charlotte needs a revamp. Well, well, Channing, you can't just say the whole fucking league, bro. I'm not saying the whole league. I only named four teams. Oh, (laughs) Atlanta, for sure. Atlanta, New Orleans, Charlotte, and uh, Chicago. Okay, really quick. If we have to, if we're gonna have a, a respectable conversation of not Charlotte and Chicago, then neither is make a move. If there was a team that can make a move, I would say the OKC Thunder. I think that they are a big and and one more shooter away from like. And again, they have the young chemistry, but you have a you're about to have a two time first team All NBA. Get them, get them the help. Windows can close quickly for championship teams. I'm not saying, but OKC has proven that they can win games. They're maybe maybe they're, they are the young thunder from the KD and the James Harden because Jalen Williams is looking like a young, a, a, a young James Harden. He looks special. What I'm saying, like, understand James Harden was sixth man of the year. I'm saying he looks like he's averaging, yeah, what, 19 points that. a game? That's what I'm saying. He's averaging 19 points a game. He's a young player. They didn't know he was going to be this good. Chet Holmgren looks like he's going to be special, right? Like they have all of these guys. Maybe if you get them the Kendrick Perkins, Serge Ibaka, maybe if you get them guys that, because that's what those boys had. So it was like, you get them, you get them that, you know, some toughness, you get them a big, maybe those boys can actually make a run to the finals. Maybe I like, I think they're young enough. They got the enough skill. They got clutch guys. They got and they're proven right now, them in Minnesota. And Minnesota has bigs. And you have all the assets. Don't give me the, oh, well, I want our guys to play together one more year. And, oh, they're ahead of the timetable. You don't get to pick the timetable. Your players pick the timetable, right? Their work ethic, how much they win, how much they put in it, they dictate your timetable, right? If they were just like the, if they were the fifth seed, which would still be impressive, you would be like, okay, I want to give them a little bit more time. But since they're like hovering around the one or two, see, push them chips in that motherfucking pot. See, see if you can get to a conference final. See if you can possibly get to an NBA finals early. That's real experience. Mm. Maybe. I'm actually not, not mad at that. Because there was yeah. a time where I thought the experience would be the reason why they didn't. Yeah, get them a big. And it does, you don't have to make a big splash. They don't need, they, they just need, like, respectfully, Hartenstein, not that the Knicks would ever give him up, but I'm saying a big of that caliber. Energy guy, plays all the right way, can, you know, finish, do a little something. Like, get him that type of, get him somebody that can guard a Jokic. Get him somebody, get him somebody that can guard an Anthony Davis, right? Get him somebody that, and that's not just small ball. Like, even if it's just 18, 20 minutes a night, that would be, if you gave them that, or they got that, they could, in my opinion, they could possibly run away with the West. Ooh. Wow. Like when I say run away, not in the playoffs, I say run away in the regular season. Like Anyone can run away in the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think right now they're hovering at one and two and going back and forth with Minnesota. And yeah. I think Minnesota has a more complete roster. They've got Mike Conley. That's a vet. They got, they got Rudy Gobert. They got, you know, Nas Reed. They, they, they have a town. They got a more, complete roster than okc d- does so if you're okc complete your roster yeah totally all right Channing, are you drinking a beer what no yes <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up uh, i gotta go host a show for the lakers and Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> <That'll> <laughs> <be> <laughs> i gotta go do something serious now 